Coconut Farm. Big Lynn, what a fish. Good morning guys. It's Friday morning, it's about 20 past 10. We're on the A303. We're heading west. We're going ultimately to Cokin Farm. I've been looking forward to this for a long, long time. I booked it ages ago. Um, it's so hard to get on that lake. I booked this well in advance and the weekend's finally come around. Got a nice long weekend, Friday lunchtime till Monday lunchtime. So I've got three nights ahead of me and yeah, I'm buzzing for it. Absolutely looking forward to this. I just can't wait. I just really hope the fish aren't spawning this weekend. There's been a lot of lakes in the area where they're starting to get a bit fruity. I've seen on the socials that it's, you know, it's kicking off everywhere. And I really hope they hold off or they're already done by now for Oak Lake at Coking Farm. So, fingers crossed, we get a good chance of one of the massive fish that reside in that water. There are some absolute chunks in there. Every chance this weekend of getting a PB. So, let's fingers crossed, pray to the carp gods. Oh, I can't wait to get there. Anyway, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so we're on our way to the swim. Slings, nets, mats, all dipped. Shut up. And uh, had a quick chat with Chris in the shop. The guys who just left that have been in the swim that I'm going into. And they've had a few fish out between them. Um, including a couple of 30s. So, that's wet me whistle. Hopefully, we can bag one. They've been down for five nights, so uh, they've had several fish, but the two furries were the biggest ones they had. And they had a, a tiny little catfish as well, apparently. But, that's it. Just got to concentrate on this bumpy little bit of track. It's not too bad. If you know what a fishing track is like. I've been down a lot worse. But I just need to watch where I'm going. So, I'll see you in a minute. Watch guys, it's about half two now. All set up, sun's beating down, it's a glorious day. Bit of a nice breeze, which is quite welcome actually. And like I say, we're all set up. The rods are out. I've got Well, live take, but it doesn't feel particularly big. A little while ago, I did have a little catfish, a tiny one. I actually thought it was a baby, baby carp. Didn't give up much of a fight at all. A little bit of kicking going on, but nothing major. Again, I think this is a small fish. Let's wait and see, eh? This is on a PVA bag with the mini mix pellet and one of the new natural magic beam wafters. So uh, let's start to pull, pull back. It was the same as I had the, uh, the catfish on a little while ago. Nice to be getting action. It would be nice to get a big fish. Preferably a carp, not a catfish. But hey, it's nice to be getting bites. This was straight out in front of me. 11 wraps. I'm starting to give a bit of a, a bit of a tussle. He's seen that tree to my side and he's going for it. 
Look down a bit, try and get him back. So he's right down in my left hand margin here. Look up a bit. He's turned into a big fish all of a sudden. Now my left hand rod's going because that's where my left hand rod is, right underneath that tree down to the left there. So he's obviously touched that line. And I'll come to that, why I put that there in a minute. It is a foulox pike. Not what you want. I say foulox, I think he's foulox. But hey, it's action. Let's get him in, see what's going on with him. Let's see what's going on with him. See it done. Ah, oh, not really. <laughs> yeah. For sake, any chance of borrowing your throne sticks? I only bought my little one. Yeah, I've, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there you go, there's the magic bean that he zooked on. Oops, come out in the net. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I'd foul him, but it's caught round the uh, the gill raker. But yeah, he's uh, fair and square in the bottom lip. But, uh, not a blank, I've already had a little cat as well. <laughs> yeah, tiny little thing. Okay guys, so you just see me have that pike, probably about eight, nine pound. Um, yep, yeah, hooked fair and square in the bottom lip. And the, I thought it was foul up because the line was coming from behind his head, but it's just where the line was gone around his gill raker. But um, yeah, once I slid that round, it was uh, straight to the, straight in the gob. But yeah, so that was the right end rod again. So I've had two takes now on the solid bag with the uh, natural magic bean. Both on the right hand rod, straight out, 11 wraps. And as you saw, that one was a drop back. The first one with a catfish, it's only about that big, this catfish. Honestly, it felt like a, a bream. Um, just kept shaking and shaking and shaking. But it came in, I just unhooked him in the, in the edge, so I didn't even film him. But that take was up, down, up, down, up, down, really haphazard, not even like as quick as that. It's just boop, 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 boop. So, uh, yeah, get in action, not the right sort of action. Now, when I put my middle rod out, which is actually going to be my left hand rod essentially, towards the tree on the island, I uh, had the rod tip on the bottom to sink the line. And as I pulled the rod up, it came up with a bit of silt on it and I just flicked it in the edge to get the silt off the ring tip. And a big plume came up. I would obviously spook to carp just under the rod tip, literally. So, my left hand rod, I've literally tucked it to my left hand side. It's about two and a half foot out, three foot out, just under the tree down there. Um, yeah, hence the reason I've got that one really slack and just give it a go. And on that one, I've got a hardened hooker with a little fake, not the plastic, you're not allowed plastic here, but the, the like the corn, yellow corns. So that's on there. Middle rod is a match the hatch, wafter, 
OG fish, both on OG fish at the moment, and obviously the magic being on the right hand rod. So let's get that right hand rod out again, then we can relax and enjoy the afternoon. Hopefully we'll get into a carp. Watch well, guys, about half past five, and I'm having a bit of a change up. I've reeled the rods in, I've changed the spools on the middle and right hand rod. I've put some um, fluorocarbon on those, so I want the line to sink. I'm going to try and do without using back beds on here this weekend, see how I get on. I had a massive liner earlier and I hit the, hit the rod, picked the rod up and hit it, but my line was going to the left and then straight back to where it was cast, so something's ran through mid-water and uh, yeah, it's caught me line. So I'm going to try the fluorocarbon, try and sink the line down and avoid having to use back leads. So that's the plan there. And I put them all in. I'm going to put a marker rod out in a minute. I'm going to put it out where I put some bait out earlier with a throwing stick. It's literally straight out in front of this room, 11 wraps. I'm going to put the marker out though and then put the baits out left and right of the marker the middle rod and the right hand rod and then again put some baits over the top so uh, there's a bit of a scattering in the area and i might even use the boat to take them out so i can put some pellet and some stuff in right over the bait as well so i might do that but anyway i'll show you the rigs left hand rod which is going over towards the tree on the island it's a running lead and on there i've got just a straightforward blowback rig with a, quite an aggressive kicker on there um, using shrink tube and that's using a hardened hooker of the fruit and nut topped with one of the corns, fake like boily corns. So that's going on the left hand rod. Okay on the middle rod I've got OG fish pop up on a hinge stiff rig using a semi coated, semi stiff coated braid again on a running lead and it's set to, to run but it's, it will take some force before the fish shakes its head and then it'll come free so it'll give it the bolt effect pricking effect but then once the fish is shaken it should turn into a running lead so that's going out on the middle rod and the right hand rod is a true running lead hence the reason I've got it taped with some PVA tape and on there I've got completely uncoated braid and again down to a blowback rig using a kicker very similar to the uh, the left hand rod that I showed you and again very similar except on this one rather than the uh, fruit and nut I've got an OG fish hardened hooker so that's my tactics running red running reds running leads on all three rods and uh, yeah a mixture of fruit and nut og fish and also a pop-up on there just to see if i can nick a bite and see what works like i say i'll put those out now and first things first i'm going to get the marker rod out there in the spot so i've got my target to, to ping the bait over So, in the bucket, I've got a mixture of fruit and that, and OG fish. I've not done anything to these boilers, just straight out of the freezer. And I'll just put in a spread to the left and right. Left and right, the marker. So the marker is going to be literally one rod to the left of it and one rod to the right hand side. Get some more over that side. I've already put 
quite a bit of bait out earlier. When I first got here, like I say, I was using the throwing stick and the catapult to do that. I just want a nice spread of boilies in that general area. So hopefully if any fish move in, we will uh, stay there for a little while and hopefully trip up on our boilies, on our hook bait. Like I say, I probably will take the boat out to do these. more pouches I reckon and that'll probably do us I've got four kilos two kilo of each in the bucket I've got some some shelf life back up in another bucket so uh, yeah I've got plenty of bait and plus the good thing is they actually sell Parker Bates in the shop at Coking Farm. They also sell it at Top of Manor as well. So that's the baiting up done. I'm not going to go too mad, I've got quite a bit out there. Okay guys, so when I, when I put the baits out, I'm going to use the boat. I've got some pellets, some sweet corn and some chopped up worms that's been soaking in the flat spot, in the monster crab flat spot. And uh, yeah, that's going to go out in the boat. Some handful of boilies and some uh, some other pellet, I guess. But yeah, that is going to be the tactic for tonight. So let me get them out, then we can enjoy the evening and hope the fish start to show over the bait. Okay, it's just coming up to seven. Still very warm, and I've just cooked me uh, dinner. Nice bit of steak combined with a Greek salad and some good old English mustard. Love it. So I'm going to tuck into that, enjoy that and enjoy this lovely, lovely evening. What's your favourite part of carp fishing? I think this is up there for me. The rods are out, I've had my dinner, I've got a nice cold can of beer or cider, just sitting here chilling. Watching, waiting, enjoying. I love it. In the summer, this sort of time when the sun's going down, it's absolutely sublime. You wait all day for these moments, don't you? Wake up in the morning, hope it's going to go off. Sit there in the blazing sun, wait for the sun to go down. Perfect. This is what it's all about to me. One of my favourite parts of carp fishing. There's many of them. This is up there. What do you think? What's your favourite part of carp fishing? Yeah, this is up there for me. Anyway, cheers. It's been very quiet out there though. I don't think I've heard or seen anyone have any action. Yeah, a few more people have turned up, full of anticipation, they're just setting up, ready for the weekend ahead. Hopefully, amongst all of us, we'll see some fish on the bank and hopefully, we saw some fish on this swim here. But uh, we'll see what happens. I've had a few knocks. I've had a bit of indication on the left hand rod. Um, not too sure what's going on there. I've left it and the middle rod I've had a, a bit of a liner on. So that is it. That's the action so far. I'm gonna sit back, chill, and I'll see you guys in a bit. Evening guys, it's quarter to nine, and the sun's well and truly going down. It's starting to get quite dark, and it's very quiet still, nothing on the rod. So over there is where I've seen fish showing, just off the left-hand side of that island, which is out of my water. And there's fish showing everywhere, all small stuff, just dappling the surface. But yeah, it's been a beautiful afternoon.
beautiful evening, as you see. Did we get anything on those? Watch you guys, it's quarter to five. I've just lost one right at the net. Nice looking common. It was on the right hand rod on the OG fish hardened hooker. Top of a little bit of the uh, corn's fake plastic, well, not plastic corn, corn's boily shaped corn. So absolutely gutted. Yeah, had it right over the net and then you just bang. Unbelievable. Anyway, gonna get the rod straight back out there. Fingers crossed, we'll get another chance. Eight thirty, and I'm fishless. It's been a fairly quiet night. I had a couple of bleeps on the right hand rod, which I left. It was weird because it actually went down a bit, and I went back up to the original position. So I don't know if something's hit the the line closer in, and I don't know. It's it's a weird one, but I left it. Glad I did because that's the one I had the, the take on at quarter to five this morning. Yeah, right hand rod over on the baited patch. Off it went. Funny fight. I thought it was a like a medium-sized cat, a small-sized cat. It was uh, powerful, but not too powerful. And the head was shaking. Feel it didn't feel like a big carp, you know. It felt like a, a small cat. Just it sort of kited over to the left. Managed to keep it away from the other lines. Eventually, it rolled just in my margin. This was just getting light. It was quite dark still. But it was just getting light as it came up. I just saw the pat pattern of a common carp. Oh, lovely, nice carp at last. So playing the fish in the margins. Got the net ready. Wasn't ready the first time. So it take a bit of line. Second time, come up. Poof. Gutted. Hook pull as it was over the net, absolutely, absolutely gutted. That's quarter five this morning. Put the bait back out, same spot, and uh, the other rods haven't been touched, so I'm leaving them for the moment. And yeah, that is it. I mean, it was a uh, quiet night, it was quite a lot of activity going on on the other side of the bank. I think about three o'clock, I was woken up by Fella's head torch. Now, straight opposite me, Bibby's got a big red light out, which is on all night. Don't know why. There's a red light in front of the bivvy that's on all night. The guy to the right had a green head torch, and the guy out the, on the, as I'm looking at it to my left, had a bright white head torch, and that's the one that was uh, kept flashing in my bivvy. And so I'm watching, see what's going on out there, thinking he might have been playing a fish, but he wasn't, he had his boat out. But he had his boat out for ages, and it was going over, right over to my right, he was going well out of his water, and then going back again. And then going over towards the island, then going back to him, not in the wall, not on the bank, but going back towards where he is, and then right back over the other side again. And this was going on for well, ages, absolutely ages. I don't know, I was watching it for about 20 minutes because I couldn't sleep because the lights were so bright. And in the end, I just sort of put the sleeping bag over my head and uh, went off, and it was still going on over there at that time. So I don't know what's going on. But yeah, this boat was just having a merry time going up and down the lake. And what was happening? The guy's watching it with his head torch. So it's like, it looks like a lighthouse going across the lake. I don't understand. But anyway, I like to keep the use of the head torch to a minimum. But obviously it's for courses, but yeah, it was, it's quite annoying. I'm not gonna lie. But anyway, rant over. 
So we've had a bit of drizzle this morning. Fairly chill, overcast day. It's uh, quite cool. So hopefully the fish may get their heads down a bit more than they did yesterday. Apart from that, not a lot to report. Mama duck and her baby ducks came over. They was literally in the, just on the edge of the ground sheet on, in the bivvy, pecking around. It's quite nice. And apart from that, nothing. So I'm going to get my breakfast on, have a cup of tea, and I'll catch up with you as and when and if it happens. Morning guys, just gone 10 o'clock. Sun's trying to break through. It's quite a pleasant day now. I'm going to have to shoot to the shop at some point. I've run out of batteries for my alarms. I should have got some when I was shopping the other day for my food. Yeah, I've had to change one set of alarms. I haven't got, I haven't got any spare batteries, so it's more of a just in case in case the other ones go. I can't relax if I know they might stop working. So at some point, I wanna get some spare batteries, peace of mind and all that. So obviously before I go to the shops, I'm gonna reel the rods in, but before I do that, I'm just gonna cook myself a bit of brekkie. Got some sausages on the go, got some eggs, sausage and egg rolls on the menu. So I'll have those before I get down the shops and then come back and set back up. But that's it, state of play. Fell over the other side, just let her take. So uh, be interested to see what that is. But um, yeah, I'll catch up with you in a little while. Watch guys, just getting on for one o'clock. I've popped down the shop, got some spare batteries. Got Paul next door, you wanted some leads, so I've got him some leads. Walked down, as I was coming out of the shop, it started to rain. As I was walking back, a couple of cracks of thunder. Got back to the bivvy, not too bad. Spitting in with rain, spitting, spitting, drizzling with rain. Got the rods out, same as before, put the marker rod out. Put the boat out either side with some uh, pellet and boily in the hopper and then with the catapult sprinkle some bait all over the area so it's nice and tight and exactly where i'm fishing uh, left hand rods gone again over to the tree on the left hand side so the rods are out and now it's starting to rain a bit heavier so i'm hunkering down inside the bivvy and uh, taking it easy but i'll show you what it's like outside there you go So it's not too bad, it's not horrendous, but uh, hopefully just a shower. But anyway, I'm not going outside to get wet, I'm staying in here and I'll catch up with you in a bit. Well, no sooner had I said that than the heavens have opened. Uh, nice weather for them. I'm definitely staying in the bivvy, I'll see you in a bit. Okay guys, it's about four o'clock and still nothing happening been very quiet, I've had a couple of bleeps on the right hand rod, that's about it. Rumble of thunder in the distance, we've had rain on and off, occasional sunshine coming out momentarily, but uh, yeah, different day to yesterday. I'm keeping off the solid bags today, because all I got yesterday was the, uh, the catfish and the pike on that, so I'm uh, sticking to the boily only approach. In the meantime, there's the view. I'm gonna cook this, which I found in Tesco's when I was doing my shop the other day. It looks quite nice. So I'm uh, gonna try this and uh, we'll see how it is. I'll let you know. Okay guys, just a little catch up. Nothing's happening, it's about half past four. I've had my uh, me bento, my uh, sweet chili chicken and rice wasabi bento thing from Tesco's it was actually pretty good a um, lot of it yeah it's a good portion size don't think the quality is as good as the cook range you get the frozen range very nice nonetheless and like I say quite a big uh, portion size so very content after having that still raining there we go still the old rumble of thunder still confined to the bivvy but hey I'm going to wash me uh, ridge monkey up and then sit and chill and I'll see you in a bit. Evening guys, just gone seven o'clock. A little bit chillier than yesterday, obviously, what with the uh, showers and that we've had, but still quite a nice pleasant evening. Now, I've just had a funny occurrence on the left-hand rod. Had a take, 
I was next door talking to Paul and Chris in the rooms next door, and um, left hand rod, beep, 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 beep. So I've come running over, wound down, nothing there, wound down, nothing there. Eventually, I could feel something on the line, and I was convinced it was something tiny. Then nice. all of a sudden, it started to pull back, and the guy said, That's not, you think you've got something on there? So, uh, yeah, I had something on. Um, no, something small on playing it. it for a little while and then all of a sudden yeah, it pulled. It. I'm convinced it was a small cat though, don't ask me why. Uh, it's a strange take. Like I say, it kited over, it was swimming towards me on the take. And yeah, I struggled to actually keep up with it. So, very weird. Okay. One of those things we'll never know for sure. But hopefully we get a chance of another there. fish on the bank. Hopefully, well, another fish, a fish on the bank. Fingers crossed. It's uh, lost it. Yeah, it's been pretty yeah. slow on here this I weekend. It it's been a few fish out, but not many. So um, yeah, I think it's going to be a big ask. Uh, what I have done, obviously, put the left hand rod back out, same spot, middle and right hand rod. I've left from where I recast after I went to the shop. All three rods are Arden hookers with the fake yellow corn on the as toppers. Left hand, right hand rod are both OG fish. Middle rod is the fruit and nut. And what I have done, I've not recast, like I say, the middle rod and right hand rod, but I have put some more bait over the top of the catapult in the area. So uh, fresh bait over the top of the, the other baits. So we'll see what happens. Fingers crossed, one of them tears off. But uh, obviously you'll be the first to know and I'll catch up with you in a little while. Evening guys, it's coming up to nine o'clock, the sun's going down behind me. It's turning a little bit chilly, but it's a beautiful evening nonetheless. It is a little damp and boggy. And I'll keep getting individual bleats on that left hand rod. There's the state of the bivy. I say it has been a bit of a soggy one at times today. Actually cats and dogs, but Still got two nights ahead. Still got two nights for something to happen. Hopefully, something will happen soon. But I'll put the camera away, and if it happens, I'll get it out and share with you. But probably see me in the morning next. Anyway, I'll see you later. Okay, guys, it's 20 to 11. I'm finally off the mark. It's 20 pound four. Common. Fought like an absolute demon. I was convinced it was a catfish. Here we go. Shoot. Shoot. Yeah, so it's £20.4. Absolute demon of a fish. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, beat the hell out of me. Like I say, I was convinced it was a, a catfish. Right until the last moment I saw it pop up and I thought, hold on, that towel don't look like a catfish. Made up. Here he goes. I'm going to try and spin him around. Show the other side. And the other side's a nicer side actually. Like I say, 20 pound four, that's the uh, the middle rod absolutely tore off. Gave an amazing count for itself. One of the best fighting carp I've ever had. So yeah, happy days, we're off the mark. 20 pound four, Oak Lake, common. Shoot, 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 shoot. Yeah, let's get it back, get the rod back out and see if we can get another one. Okay guys, it's four o'clock and uh, left hand rod under the tree on the island. Didn't rip off. Bobbing up and down on the... Bobbing shot to the top, went down a bit and shot to the top again. I was on the rod before anything else could happen and uh, yeah. Mirror. He's not happy. He's not happy at all. 
this is, if I can get him up for the camera. 27 pound 14, lovely mirror. Shoot, 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 shoot. Yeah, lovely plump mirror. Again, a great fight, really good fight. So I'm not complaining, but it's not hitting the 30 barrier. Still a lovely fish. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Okay. Get that one more time and I'll show you the other side. But there you go. Happy days. Shoot, shoot. Hey. £27.14. Spin it around, show you the other side. I say he's not happy. There we go. How about that? Happy days. Shoot, shoot. Shoot, shoot. Hey, we'll have to get it back. See if we can get another one. This is a bit more like it though, isn't it? Thanks, fella, coming around and seeing us. Made my morning. Well, made my weekend so far. There's that. Good lad. All right, get it back. I'll catch up with you in a bit. So I'm lying in my bivvy, waiting for this mist to clear. So I can put the left hand rub back out under that tree to my left. It's not the tree we're looking at, it's out of sight at the moment, but the mist is too thick to see exactly where I want to put it. So, yep. Wait till the mist clears a little bit and I'll get that rub back out. Morning guys, it's about 7.30. Sun's coming up nicely. And we're a bit happier this morning. A couple of fish under our belts. But I'll go back a bit and tell you what happened yesterday evening. Just as, as it was getting dark, it was literally on the edge of darkness, middle rod shot to the top. I run out, leaned into it, nothing there. It thin air. So I put that back out and using the red light that Roxanne's got outside his bivy, I used that as my guide to put the boat back out. Wrapped it up on the wrap sticks followed the red light and put it out there. I'm not normally a fan of lights, but it came in handy last night. About 11 o'clock last night, middle rod ripped off, absolutely ripped off. What I forgot to mention is after that cast, after that fluffy run, is I changed it over from an OG fruit and nut to an OG fish. So all three rods are fishing OG fish with corn toppers. But as I was getting back to it, about 11 o'clock, Absolutely ripped off one noter, played it in, and a really dogged fight. I was convinced it was a cat, round to the left, then round to the right. I managed to keep it away from all the other lines. I was playing it, I got it over to this side, playing it. I was still convinced it was a cat, and eventually I just saw this towel flip over, and I thought, that doesn't look like a cat. And Chris, who's along the bank, he came over, to see what's going on. And uh, yeah, we saw the fish, thought, yeah, it's a carp. And he's up with the net, we got it in, 20 pound four, put that back out. And then four o'clock this morning, left hand rod, beep, 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 up to the top, tight, lean into it. And uh, again, a really dogged fight. This one was just kept pulling, 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 kept. And again, had it over this side to start with, which was good, away from the other two rods. Then he went over, did clip the middle rod. I got him over the other two lines and netted him in the same place over here. But again, it was a really dogged fight. And um, again, I didn't know if it was a cat because the fight was proper ploddy. There was none of the shakiness. And yeah, got it in. And 27, 14, I think it was. So 
yeah, made up with that. Then when I went to put the rod back out, it was just a white out. There was so much mist out there. And so I thought, I'm not going to just put the rod out willy nearly. I'll wait until I can actually see where the tree is and put it out accurately. So I've done that not long ago, actually, because it took a while for the mist to clear up. Put that out. And then I've had a funny take on the right hand rod. Beep, 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 and I thought, you know what, what the heck, I'm just going to hit it. Nothing on there. So that one's gone out fresh. Left and right hand rod, both gone out fresh this morning. Middle rod is still the one from 11 o'clock last night where I had that fish on. So we'll see what happens. But I was getting knocks on the middle and the right hand rod up until very recently. So little liners, little knocks, twitches. Hopefully we'll get one to go off. But that's where we are. Like I say, much happier today. Gonna have a well-deserved cup of tea. And yeah, maybe tie some rigs up ready for later. Also guys, it's quarter past 10. The sun's long gone. This only came up briefly this morning. Now I've got cloud cover and a very cold northeasterly easterly wind. Not sure exactly what it is, but it's coming straight in the bivvy. Hence the reason I've got the uh, letterbox style because uh, it is bitter. And I'm just sort of giving myself a little bit of protection. There's not really any way I can move the bivvy around to avoid it. This, the swim doesn't really suit itself for it. So I'm just going to have to brace myself. And the only thing I forgot this session, I don't know where they are, put them somewhere safe, is my extra long pegs. I'd need them this session, but I would normally bring them with me, just in case. I think they're in my barrow bag for me, for me uh, well, my barrow. But obviously I don't need my barrow, because I can fish almost out of the car. So I'm sure that's where the pegs are, the extra long ones which if you do come to Coking Farm, I thoroughly recommend you get some extra long pegs. But it's not that strong, it's just a constant breeze. Hopefully there'll be no strong gusts, which may uh, force the pegs out, but I'm sure we'll be fine. Famous last words. On the fishing front, it's all very quiet. Paul next to me, he's gone. Fellow opposite has gone. There's still two guys fishing on the opposite bank. Another fellow's gone down the bank as well. So it's emptying out, but I think as soon as it empties, there'll be people turning up. And I've already seen some vehicles going around, um, coming into the lake. So, yep, it's that crossover time when uh, changeover of swims. But yeah, like I say, it's pretty chilly. I'm gonna shelter in here. And uh, obviously, if anything happens, I'll let you know. Okay guys, these are the three rigs that are going out tonight. All very similar, uh, using either kickers or a flipper. Baits are all identical, although that corn there has been out already. You can see where it's faded, I'll bring it out again. But yeah, OG fish hardened hookers, top of the corns, and yeah, down to the quick link loops. This is exactly the same rig as I've had the two fish on. And a little bit different because it's actually not a coated braid that one. Whereas the others are soft braids, soft coated braids. This is actually just braid. It's the um, ESP loaded I think it is. And uh, yeah, I've had the fish on that. For the lead end, I've got my usual Sort of running lead set up, set so the fish picks it up, gives a little tag, and then it comes free and running. So, yeah, that's what I've been using this weekend, and it's doing the business. So, uh, yeah, all three rods going out as that, and we'll see what happens tonight. Evening guys, just gone 20 past 7 and it's a lovely evening, 
wind's just starting to die down. It's been pretty strong today. Straight in the bivvy, it's been pretty chilly at times as well, especially before the sun came up. I was proper cold. It's turned a bit warmer this afternoon, but that wind is still coming this way. It might be a bit cooler when, once that sun goes down. But I thought I'd have a catch up. There's been nothing happening on the rods. I've recast them about, I say recast, I've used the boat at about two o'clock. The only difference to what I'm doing today and yesterday is, well, the only difference is I've spotted the bait out rather than catapulted it because the wind was so strong I couldn't reach it. But essentially the rigs, the baits and the spots are exactly the same I've been doing for the last three nights. I've had a bite on all three rods with carp, so I'm quite happy knowing the spots are okay. So I'm sticking with that and hoping that they come off again tonight. So yeah, since I've repositioned the rods, I've had an indication on this right hand rod, shot to the top, come out, hit it, nothing there. So it's gone back out on the same spot. But it's a case now sitting on my hands and waiting and hoping that one of these goes off. Let's hope we get another chance before we pack up tomorrow. Would be nice. And like I say, there are some chunks in here. I'd love to get a 30 under my belt this session. I really would. But, you know, you can only dream, can't you? But hey, dreams can come true. So let's see what happens. Well, the sun's going down now. Absolutely glorious sunset. And uh, yeah, still nothing to report. It's very quiet on the rods. But it's looking lovely out there. I'll show you it now. There we go. Wind's died down. Looking very, very nice. I did throw and stick some boilies around the general area out there earlier when the wind was up. And uh, I might even pull a few boilies out as well. Just to get them out there, get a spread of bait out on the spot. So yeah. Just looking pretty. There you go. See you tomorrow, hopefully. Mr. Sunshine. Well, oh, get that off. Would you Adam and Eve it? It's about three o'clock in the morning. Half, I don't know what time it's half two, three o'clock. Right hand rod. Absolutely belted to the top. Picked the rod up. Flat rodded me. And I'm thinking, oh no, here we go. It's a cat. Took me around the houses. Kept it away from the other lines, fortunately. And uh, eventually, a carp rolled in front of me. I couldn't believe it. Not just any carp. It's a PB. And it's also... Queen of the lake. It's the big lin. Let's wade it with Mac next door. And it's 46 pounds and four ounces. Look at that. And that is against my belly. I'm not holding this out. That is true to size. 46 pounds and four ounces. Coking farm. Big Lynn, what a fish. Absolutely made up. Happy days. Whoa. Let's try get the other side. and a brute, aren't you? I can't flip him over. Come on, over you come. Here we go. Oh. Struggling to pick it up. Here we go. And again, that is resting on my belly. I can't hold this out. That is 
an absolute nutter pick, as we would call. Oh, I'm nearly swearing. Wow, what a fish. 46 pound four, stunning. <sighs> Whoa. Right, there we go. Absolutely buzzing. No more sleep for me tonight. <laughs> Happy days. Ah, oh, wow. Quickly do the other side of that, other lens on. Appreciate this, Mac. What a beast. It's a beauty and a beast. Happy, happy days. All right, I'm gonna get it back. Oh, and I might need Max help for this as well. <sighs> okay, so here's the rig that caught that fish. OG fish, hard nooker, corn stopper, standard sort of hair rig on a wide gape uh, beat point size four, a uh, little kicker, and about eight inches on this time, it's on the soft coated braid, down to the uh, quick change anti-tangle sleeve, yeah, nice and simple. Good morning everybody, it's about half past six, still very early, sun's well up and it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, I think the wind's gonna pick up a bit again today. I'll probably come straight in my face again. But at the moment, it's absolutely stunning. All quiet on the rods. Um, well, I say all quiet, it's not been all quiet. I had a, a tritch, or well, a knock on the right hand rod. Bobbing shot to the top. I've come running out, and this was just when it was getting light. And I'm watching the rod top, top rod tip and the line where it enters the water just seeing there's any sort of twitches or knocks absolutely nothing so I've just reset the bobbin on that one on the other rods through the night I did have a few twitches and bleeps a few meerkat moments where you rip the sleeping bag off and your head's coming out and you're looking to see what's going on and then I think you put your back down you know like that so a few knocks and twitches through the night Obviously the main event was that 46 pounder on the right hand rod, about half past two, it did shoot up right to the top. I've come running out, picked the rod up, and as I went to, you know, you normally wind down, lean in, couldn't wind down, went to lift the rod up, I've got to about that far, just went whoop, and then I could feel the fish wanted to pull, so I've had to let this, loosen the spool off slightly to give it some line and I thought oh no bloody catfish isn't it it's got to be so powerful I was worried it's going to go around the island and then um, managed to gain some line on it then it sort of kited over this way I thought no not over my lines and I've got it to go the other way and it kited right around here and Mac who's two swims down I didn't realise at the time he was actually um, playing a fish. Because I saw his head torch on. And the line's going over there. And then I heard, beep, 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 beep. And I thought, oh no, I've only gone over his line. It was, it was pulling so hard down there. But I think he'd actually crossed his own line. There's nothing to do with me. But in my head, I was worried that I was going to go, you know, like a catfish, do steam train down there, catch these lines, manage to fight it back. Nowhere near the other guy's lines in the end, completely safe, but yeah, it was, I've got it back and big tussle around in front of the rod tips. How I didn't hit the other lines, I don't know. And then eventually under the head torch, I'm making some line, saw this shape come up. 
And then from the size of it, oh, catfish. Then I just saw the carp. Thought, There's no catfish, it's bloody carp. Oh, not, I don't know why I've done that. So I gently, <laughs> then I started teasing it in. I'm panicking, like, you know, I don't want this to come off. And then when I saw it properly on its side, I thought, that is one hell of a big carp. And uh, then the old ticker's going, I don't want it to fall off. And then first time over the net, and I knew I had something special straight away, but when I looked in the net, the width of this thing, it was like that. You could put a saddle on it. So, uh, yeah, I knew it was a good fish. Looked in the net, saw the scales, linear pattern. I thought there can only be one fish. Pegged the net in, run down to see Mac, who just got his fish in his net. I said, can you come and have a, come and help me out? Because without him, I don't think I'd be able to lift the fish off the ground with the scales on my own. I'm a bit of a weakling. But um, yeah, so between the two of us, we weighed it, photographed it, put it back. Oh, yeah, happy days. So. Uh, New PB, 46 pound four, get in. <laughs>